This is the Eyes On Podcast of Shore Sports Network with your host, John Corelli. We'll take you through some of the deepest and strongest storylines across the Shore Conference. First and foremost, we'd like to thank our sponsors for helping all of this happen. Today's episode is sponsored by Iron House Performance Center and Thrive Sports Rehab. Once again, just a big shout out to both of them as they help continue um, Shore Sports Network grow and continue with our success every day. So for our first dive in an Eyes On segment, we welcome a very special guest, a dear friend, Getting the Manchester football program ready for a second season as the head coach. We also have Coach Eatman from North Plainfield on as well with him. He's getting a Manchester football program ready after having a full year last year, getting all student athletes to become the role models that they are all around. And he's looking to continue the creation of the layout that he's already created. There's a lot of talent that roams throughout the program, a lot of promise, grit, and heart was shown on the field last fall. And there's no reason why it won't continue in 2023. I'm pleased to welcome on Manchester football's head coach, Tommy Farrell, and North Plainfield's head coach and coach Eatman. So both of you guys, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on, John. Uh, everything's good, man. I mean, yeah, it feels like yesterday, um, you know, we put up a new countdown in our weight room. Uh, and I think we put it up when there was like 140 days until kickoff against coach Eatman and North Plainfield. And, you know, here we are one day away. Um, the kids are definitely improving. Uh, they're competing. Um, and, you know, knock on wood, we've been pretty healthy so far. Um, so to line up against my, you know, not not just a colleague, but one of my best friends and Coach Eatman, uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty cool moment when we dap each other up at the 50 yard line. Now, I mean, that's, you know, one of the biggest things you told me when, you know, we came and visited you guys during, you know, your summer practices was that you guys had that Iron Bowl game for your week zero matchup coming up and, you know, how much that meant to you being able to coach against, you know, one of your good friends and coach Eatman. Um, so kind of just walk me through, you know, what created this little friendly rivalry. Yeah. I mean, when uh, coach Eatman and myself were coaching at Parsippany together, you know, he had, he knew I had aspirations to be a head coach. Um, and he kind of joked around one day in the coach's office before a game and said, you know, we're going to be lining up with, across from each other one day uh, sooner than later. Uh, he moved on to North Plainfield. I was lucky enough to get the job at Manchester. We were actually going to play each other last year in a consolation game. Um, but because of scheduling and the way the regional crossover worked, it didn't work out. Um, so then we set it up, you know, let's let's play week zero. Let's get another game on the schedule. Let's give the kids an opportunity to get one more game to compete. Um, we were trying so hard to find out what we were going to call it. Um, and then it kind of clicked that our initials are FE and that's the chemical symbol of iron. Um, and everyone loves a good iron bowl matchup. And you know, again, it's just so humbling because um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for Coach Eatman. Uh, my boy Derek has, has been with me since, you know, since 2020 when he hired me. I learned so much from him. A lot of what I do at Manchester comes comes from him and we're at Parsippany together. Uh, so it's just it's just awesome, man. This is going to be so much fun. Now, Coach Eatman, kind of describe to me how, you know, this game feels for you as well. I mean, uh, first, for having, having me on. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, Pleasure having you. And with, you know, with Coach Farrell, you know, from, from the moment I hired him, I knew big things that were coming his way. A lot of excitement, does everything the right way. We would joke in the office, like you said, all the time, like sooner or later we'll get a chance to, to no clue it would be this soon. Um, but for me, I think it's just the respect that we have for each other. Like I said, I think, I think it's a great story. You know, two brothers, two different walks uh, for this game that we love. Uh, we all love and, you know, we'll be across from each other on the sidelines, knowing each other well, you know, scheme, you know, schematics and all that stuff from, from being on the board in the off, it comes to life. And I think we, we've always both been big on, you know, what can we do? For, you know, I think this is something that, you know, gets a lot of eyes on them, but also gives them the honest truth too, because look at us just, you know, three years ago, we we're sitting in the same office having a conversation. But I, I think that's great. That's awesome. And, you know, to have that, you know, friendly rivalry with another in another conference, you know, that's good, not only for the short conference, but for the whole state as well. You know, two different programs going up against each other. And, you know, hopefully this little friendly rivalry continues every year it, to both of you guys. You guys have a lot of key guys that are coming back and you both have created strong foundations that will last forever throughout your programs. You know, what's the preparation been for the upcoming season? Uh, you know, for us, Derek, just so you know, we're running the muddle huddle every single play and we're coming out running the triple option. <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, with, with us, man, yeah, we, we do have a lot of returning starters coming back. But, um, you know, our, our key word this year was consistency and exaggeration. Um, so exaggerate your blocking steps, exaggerate your assignment, um, consistently do the right thing, consistently 
consistently know what you're supposed to do for every play call um, and exaggerate. You know, when you catch the ball on a five-yard slant, finish in the end zone. Uh, when you have a pass set, you know, block until the echo of the whistle. So that that's kind of was what I preached to the team as well as my offense coordinator, Jeff Brown. Uh, we were just, you know, preaching consistency and exaggerating because um, then it'll hopefully, you know, come to fruition on Friday night. Adding on to Coach Farrell's part there, going out to Manchester. Um, I know you say you're preaching that, but from an outsider looking in on the program and seeing how the how the kids respond and what they're doing out there, even in the short amount of time we were there, it's not just preaching. They're actually doing it. Like you can tell uh, their, their heads are in the right space and uh, they definitely buy into everything that you guys are doing. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Yeah, we got yeah. good kids, man. They, 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 Manchester, you know, hasn't really got the best reputation in the past, uh, nor have they had a lot of success. Um, but I'm just, I want, these kids deserve to win. These could, you know, um, um, so, you know, I appreciate those kind of words, Scott, really. What are kind of the season's expectations that you have, not only as a coach, but from a player and outsiders looking as well? Yeah, I don't really set football goals, John. I know that's cliche. Um, you know, I want to do like what we do. I want to do our community service. I want to, you know, get keep that 3.0 team GPA that we had last year. I let the captains decide. Uh, we have, I have a captain's dinner the night before training camp. Um, I let them decide what they want their football goals to be. Um, and, you know, they have high expectations as they should, uh, but we are focused on North Plainfield. Um, the good thing is, is that, you know, we're not really changing our scheme up. We didn't really have any serious coaching changes. I brought in another former head coach to have three former head coaches on my staff. It's huge. Um, so we're just, you know, we're, we're focused on perfecting the fundamentals, per, uh, you know, hammering the basics, and then we can build off of that, you know, throughout the season and, you know, hopefully be successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Coach Eatman, I let the short conference know what North Plainfield football is all about. I think the BCC, um, I think it's a, to, you know, a comparable conference, sure. Um, I coached, you know, down in the shore when I was at Neptune for some time. So, I, you know, I, what kind of goes on down there. Um, but, you know, our focus is this year, you know, togetherness and, and toughness. Um, you know, the kids have been cycling through, you know, some coaching changes. You know, we got so many moving parts, you know. So everything, everything's new and we're battling adversity. You know, and I just preach to the kids that, you know, as long as we stay together, you know, we're tough together, thing out. You know, I've always, you know, I've always been a brotherhood guy. Figure, you know, the football will figure itself out and they, they'll love what's going on. And I think that, you know, and, and that's the best part. You know, you see these guys fly to the ball, uh, the way they get to the ball together as a unit. Um, Tommy knows that. That was one of the things, one of the big things for me was, you know, that pursuit he has when we get to the ball. I think he was, he was big on that as well. Um, but you know, got to give a big shout out to my DC. He has them tackling really well. Um, and that was something that really needed to change. And now I can, you know, really see, how, you know, on, on the field and off the field um, with the way that they're performing at this point. Kind of just wrapping things up a little bit, just a little, I just want Tommy, Coach Farrell, I want you to just give the short conference a little, just a little, you know, message on what Manchester football it's going to be this year. Yeah, I, I expect our kids to, um, you know, like kind of going off what Coach Eatman said, man, man, play together, um, be a family. We preach, you know, I, I, I know you, you know what I took it from Stonehill College where I played, um, having discipline, having intellect and being gritty. Uh, we, so we're just going to keep digging uh, one one game at a time. Um, you're, you can expect Manchester to, to play old school smash mouth Ocean County football. Uh, we want to run the football as much as we can. We're going to swarm to the ball. Uh, my uncle Gerard O'Donnell, who used to be the head coach at Manchester, is calling our defense. Uh, he has them swarming to the ball. He has them every, you know, every play in practice, wherever the ball ends up, whether it's a 40 yard pass or, or a short run in the backfield, everybody on the defense has to swarm to the ball and get a break before we run the next play. Um, you can expect us to just hammer the fundamentals, um, simplify what we do, exaggerate, and, and you really just take it one game at a time. We can't look at the big picture. We can't look at our division or at our schedule right now. We, you know, again, cliche, but we are focused on North Plainfield because we want to really, you're not guaranteed, you know, anything in this world. You know, we're guaranteed right now. We're guaranteed tomorrow night to open up in front of our fans at the Hawks Nest um, to have these kids play, you know, another team in a different part of the state. I think it's huge for both of us. Um, and again, you know, not to be emotional, but, you know, to dap up my brother on the 50 yard line before and after this game knowing that there'll be no love lost. It's just, it's, it, it's crazy what this game does, man. Um, you know, think about it three years ago, we were wearing the same, same colors and now we're wearing different colors, but I know after this podcast, I'm going to give Derek a call. We'll probably chop it up for 15 minutes and, 
you know, you wouldn't think we're playing each other tomorrow night. And that's just a beautiful thing because we have a great relationship and uh, I'm excited to see uh, how the kids compete tomorrow night. I mean, I, I got to see them up close and personal at their, uh, at their quads. I was really impressed with the way you guys were able to run the ball. Um, I think I was, you know, moving people around the quarterback, you know, so I, I mean, I, I was impressed with a lot of stuff I've seen. You guys were clearly um, just everything you guys were doing. Um, so I, I thought that was, I thought that was what you do preach. I mean, it looked, it looked exactly like what you would want to with, with limited, you know, with limited work, you know what I mean? So that was, that was awesome. Yeah. And going off of you, like when you were at North Plainfield, man, you do swarm to the ball, you tackle really well. Uh, you have a great secondary. I thought um, you're fast. Uh, I, you're shifty. You're, not only is he a shifty quarterback, he's a lefty. So we got to defend 11, um, you know, 11 guys uh, on your offense. Cause that just makes it, that just changes the game from that aspect. Um, but to see you guys beat up on a group five team a little bit was huge, you know? Um, and then to go off when, you know, I know one of your linemen got hurt, Derek, in that scrimmage, I felt like, I felt like I wanted to come on the sideline because Derek was holding his player, by his head when he was laying on the bench, he was crying with him. He was telling him he loved them. Um, and that's bigger than the game of football. It's like, it's the brotherhood and the togetherness that coach even was talking about. And I know we, we preach the same thing when we were at Parsippany. So I wanted to, I wanted to go on the sideline. I know we joke around me and coach even like, Hey, come on the sideline. I'll give you a headset. You can come coach with me like the good old days. Um, and I wanted to, because in that moment, I knew exactly what coach even was going through. Um, so I'm just, I'm fired up to see what he's doing. He preaches, you know, they play the way he preaches as well. Um, you know, We'll see how it goes tomorrow night. I think it's going to be a great matchup. I'm just saying, then we get some rain too. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll stop. Oh, I think the rain should. Stop. I think the rain should stop before kickoff. Um, yeah, it's supposed to rain during the day. For if, the most there's, part. if there's no lightning or thunder, I mean, we're playing, buddy. I'm just letting you know. Get the buses ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> we're not rescheduling this to Saturday, and I know you don't want to drive down to the shore on the no weekend. Way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. I want to change to a Saturday at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I'm, I'm just anxious for some football. Not, yeah, yeah. Know, it, it feels like forever. Friday night headsets on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, I'm in the car right now. I just saw our freshman try scrimmage at Tom's uh, at Jackson Memorial with Tom's River South. You know, it's here, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I, pumpkin spice coffee is at Wawa. Yeah, there's that little crisp in the air last week. It's 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 time to go, man. I'm 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 excited. It's, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, you could you could feel the I fall energy kind of just coming in. Snes is gonna show out. I think it's the blue and gold student theme. Um, uh, you know, Coach, even like you know when we were at Parsippany, we come out to the purge, so nothing's changed from my end. Uh, Hawks Ness is gonna be, is gonna be crazy, and you know there's gonna be tailgates going. I'm just interested what time you're gonna leave North Plainfield because that short traffic on a Friday is not the best. <laughs> yeah, you gotta leave like four. You even make it from point A to point B. I got it mapped out. I got it mapped out. <laughs> but it, 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 I think it's, I think while, you know, the battle of the beach and all that stuff, I think, I think this Iron Bowl is, is our little, you know, of that, of that. So they get that experience. So the, the, the bus ride this year, cool. And then I uh, hope that'll be, it's got a new turf. You got, they're, they're, they're taking care of you up there, Derek. Yeah, they're they're putting field house scoreboard. That's awesome. That's awesome stuff. All right, fellas. Well, pre I don't want to take up to you. I know you guys are busy, so we already took up a, a good chunk of your day, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, again, thank you so much to both of you. Um, you know, we both couldn't, you know, we couldn't we couldn't ask for this more. I mean, this is it's gonna be great for you know, Manchester for North Plainfield for the short conference. Um, you know, it's it's a great budding rivalry that you guys have. And, you know, both teams you know, have a real a real opportunity to make some headlines in their respective conferences. So, I, again, I really cannot thank you guys enough. Do you guys have a trophy made up? I don't know. trophy made up? We don't have a trophy, but maybe the losing team should buy the trophy. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> Deal. 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 Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't really ask for anything better than that on a week zero matchup. You know, two two close friends going at it on the gridiron on a Friday night, you know, getting back into the swing of things. So to both of you, Coach Eatman, Coach Farrell, I just want to thank you so much for the time today. So I really could not thank you guys enough. Um, Manchester plays North Plainfield at Manchester for week zero football. 
a lot of talent and a lot of upside coming from the Hawks this year. They'll have to start off early, but with a strong start, all eyes could very well be on the town of Manchester to dominate the gridiron this fall. This has been the first edition of the Eyes On Podcast with John Corelli. Can't wait to see what eyes are on when we return for our second dive. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you.